My name is Greg Gourdet. I'm the culinary director of Departure Restaurants for Sage Restaurant Group. I started cooking at home. You know, I was in college in Montana, cooking for myself for the first time, renting my own house. So I had to feed myself because I was thousands of miles away from my parents, you know, for the first time, supporting myself. And I fell in love with cooking, you know. I, I fell in love with the ingredients, you know. I, I fell in love with the social aspect around it and being able to cook for your friends and having fun dinner parties. And I started to develop the trade and I, I worked, I washed dishes. That was one of my first jobs. I also worked at a deli, worked with a lot of vegetables actually, which is part of my story today. But back then I really just wanted to focus on falling in love with the craft and, and just learning, you know, I, I wanted to be a chef. Um, that full thought process kind of came a little bit later. You know, I just wanted to cook. And out of that, you know, I, I pursued my career. I, I went to culinary school, which was um, a really fantastic next step, and I worked at some really great restaurants, and, you know, here 20 years later, I'm um, at this point in my career. You know, I, I worked for a very celebrated chef early in my career, Jean-Georges Van Der Richten, and he's from Alsace in France, and he actually started a lot of his early career in Asia, um, which is a huge part of my story today. You know, I, I work in a very specifically modern Asian restaurant, and I do thank him for kind of exposing me to these early Asian ingredients, ginger and chilies and spices and all the beautiful herbs and um, kind of all these traditional and classic Asian flavors. So for him, you know, he actually started his um, career kind of with French background, you know, amazing classic French cuisine and then, you know, kind of modernizing things. And, you know, he started a lot of the early fusion movement um, that was part of the 90s and the late 80s, which kind of combined French flavors with Asian flavors. So ever since I started my career, because I did my extern with him and then, you know, really had my first culinary cooking job with him as well. So, you know, very early in my career, I, I had a lot of cultural influences in what I was doing and involved French cuisine and involved lots of Asian flavors. And very early on, I saw the importance of having global awareness. Um, and that was something that was going to be a big part of my career. And it still is today. As we move forward, it's important to be able to learn from different cultures and to kind of just talk to people and ask them, you know, what did you when you were growing up? You know, especially in the culinary arts, it's it's a gift to be able to, you know, talk to, you know, my Mexican coworkers and, and you know, we had a Mexican pop-up dinner once and, you know, it was really great to make tamales and, you know, tell me how your grandmother made this mole, you know, let's try to make it together, you know, or, you know, my Korean friends and, you know, like, let's make kimchi together, you know, how did your aunt make this kimchi? You know, so it's really fantastic to be able to pull from the resources and just get to know people and just absorb their different cultures. You know, working with specifically Asian ingredients and trying to kind of source these specifically cultural items that are authentic, you know, it's important. You, you want to make some smart decisions and, you know, obviously we'll use specifically classic and technical traditional ingredients that we import, but at the same time, you do want to represent where you work and where you live. And that should be for anyone anywhere globally. So we're obviously highlighting all the amazing farms that we have here. We're highlighting the amazing seafood, the amazing meats, the amazing vegetables, and we're applying our own twist on them that speak to the cultures that we're using. For example, we'll use really amazing apples to make bibimbap during apple season. You know, we'll make amazing kind of, uh, I just made this amazing strawberry vinaigrette with Japanese chilies uh, for a uh, tuna dish the other day. You know, just really wanting to bridge the gap between what's in season right here in Portland, Oregon, and something that speaks to the cultures that we're working with in our food. You know, I, I think for anyone who wants to be a chef, I think some important skills to have are one, drive, two, determination, and three, perseverance. Because I think all of them talk about character and being able to push through barriers. You know, I think there's a lot of beautiful art and creativity that surrounds the culinary arts, but the truth is it's a very challenging career path. It's extremely long hours, you know, the money's not that great, you know, and it's, it's, it's hot, <laughs> you cut yourself, you burn yourself, and it's a, it's a very high pressure situation. You're in a room with lots of other people all trying to push really hard to create this great experience for people. And, you know, there are different styles of restaurants these days. I've always worked in kind of higher volume restaurants, so, you know, that adds an element of even more pressure because we're feeding so many people. Organization and project management is absolutely vital in the kitchen, you know, with your menu at the restaurant that, you know, the one that we were at, we have 56 things on the menu. So that is divided up amongst the team and we all have many, many different projects and each of those projects have many, many different steps. So if you're not organized, if you don't have a full list of 
what you need to do, a full list of the ingredients that you need to work with, a full list of how your day is going to be timed out. You know, you're setting up your sex for failure because you need to be fully detailed and fully organized to execute this in the a proper time frame. So, you know, being able to project manage and kind of see what you need to do, get it done and keep going is an extremely important skill set to have. I think definitely get out there and cook in a kitchen. I think cook in a kitchen and really think about if that's what you want, because it might sound very glorious and glamorous. And I, I truly, you know, I'm, I'm aware I'm part of it, but there's a lot of cooking shows and reality TV based around cooking and, you know, celebrity chefs, and there's a lot of glamour around it. But the reality of it is that it's really long work and it's really hard to get to that level. And a lot of good work has to come from that. And if you don't love to cook and you don't want to dedicate, you know, 10 to 12 hours of your day every day and give up holidays and give up weekends and give up family time just to, you know, physically make all this food and, and, and hone your craft, you know, it's probably not for you. I've seen many, many eager cooks come in and they realize that, you know, like you're going to have to work every holiday. You have to work every Saturday because it's the busiest day of the week. You know, we need you here. We need you to be flexible. You know, you can't really get sick, <laughs> you know, because... If you're sick, then someone has to cover for you and it unbalances the kitchen. So it's a lot of work. Um, I definitely suggest getting out there, working somewhere busy um, and really figuring out if it's what you want to do.